Your car reach. There we go. All right, we're hitting the record on it now, Reed. Fine, fine. See what I see. Get back there. There's number six. Jeez. Now, if you think I have an issue, it's been a month for everyone <laughs> listening. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's Not right. just a week? Yeah, six over a month's period. Rob, Rob <laughs> thinks it's just been a week. I save them all up just for these days. That's all. We did have a break. Welcome back to D5 Questing, everybody. Yay! We did, uh, we did have a break. This is episode four for the day. We took a little lunch break. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you to... Salad. Thank you to lunch providers all over the all over the world. Word, stay essential. Um, yeah, that's it, I guess. Thanks for stopping by. One, two, three, D five. D five. You're wrong. <laughs> all right, so uh, uh, welcome back to D five questing. This is Jacob and the gang here uh, coming at you. Wow. Planet fun. Make yourself more important than everybody else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. Reed, do you have a word of wisdom for us? I am sure. <laughs> I do in a minute. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you think he prepares for these things? They just happen naturally. Today's episode is brought to you by Possibility. Every dawn brings a new day for you to shine or to flame out in abject humiliation. <laughs> Sounds like Torvo. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe maybe today you can try sneak being a little sneakier. Yeah, I'm gonna I am gonna set up. Maybe one today of those you'll English. actually be able to grapple one of these spiders. Yeah, right. After today. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm gonna sit on my butt. Who's That's uh, my favorite line? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna sit on my butt. See. Oh. Very good. Yep. Yeah, right. Um this all is, right. This uh, is Jacob's fault. You can't set him up like that. <laughs> you, can't, you, can't. you just you just you just my impulse control is really low after lunch. Jake, why don't you uh, take that like impulse control and tell us about the uh last week's episode? All right. Well, previously we had just uh finished dealing with the spiders. And we recognized that the uh, the shape of these keyholes, braziers, uh, <laughs> kept everything lit. Um, and then we had to, we recognized that uh, there was the four doors behind this throne. And each one had their own little riddles that were, uh, they, they were basic, if one might say. But uh, your basic riddle, yes, yeah, still took us a while to rhyme, basic. you know. I know, right? Teeth with teeth, hey, one then it's a far enough. stretch. It's a far stretch. I feel like the GM maybe was stretching that, uh, letting us know that this ruler might have sucked with riddles because maybe somebody else did, but you know, whatever. Um, whoa, so, <laughs> ah, calling him out, calling him out. Torvald's gonna die this episode, <laughs> 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 anyways. Um we figured out the riddles to every door. We first opened one door. It showed us this uh, tree along a long path that was made out of tourmaline. And a light shined through and shined specifically on a tourmaline fruit that was on it. Mm-hmm. Torvo. I remember that. Yep. Torvo snuck out, plucked the fruit. Everything went dark. He was able to get back before everything fell into this abyss uh, that was there. Next door held... Uh, some enchanted stuff in there. It was an enchanting room. We all, some of us looked into this spherical object and were able to see our past story, but then all of a sudden it took a dark turn at the end of each one. Um, None of us shared with each other what we saw, but we were all slightly disturbed. Uh, Then we ended up finding some enchanted items. Only two of you guys looked through that, uh, that, right? I thought there was three. Yeah. Was it just no, me and you? It was, was just, just yeah, yeah. It was just you uh, two. Yeah, okay. Rab, Rab anyway. never looked through it. Uh, I thought Rab might have. Okay, no, champ so, told him not to. It's sorry, guys. It's been like two weeks, three weeks. <laughs> uh, so then um, we found some stuff. Torvo drank some blood. Um, what he uh, thought was blood. Champ found a dagger that felt right. Just um, feels right. And then uh, Rab fondled some balls. 
I mean, marbles. Marbles. <laughs> um, marbles. Golly. Then, uh, <laughs> Loose tongue on this one. <laughs> and then, and then uh, uh, Mordax, the axe, uh, found himself an amulet that felt heavy and not. Then At we the same time. entered into <laughs> another door, which was just a bunch of lanterns. And we were like, that's pretty trippy. Lanterns. So we stole some and, lanterns. Yep, so we all kind of lit some lanterns and uh, nothing really happened. And we decided to mix up all of the solutions to those puzzles. And it allowed us to go in. Well, after Mordax was a little frustrated, he figured out the final clue for us. It was all down even looking. <laughs> and we, the final door opened to a descending staircase. And was, that is where we left off. It was really convenient that uh, Mordax the Axe... Uh, uh, was able to solve the riddle right there at the end of the episode. You know, he's always been there in the clutch moments. Solve the solve the puzzle. He gets that clutch. All right. <laughs> Sick. What? Good what is cop. the marching order? I'm in one front. by one. I don't know. Yeah, like I've been stealthing in. So one. has Rab's uh, in the back because he can't see nothing and wanted that key. I'm, I'm in front because I was <laughs> the one that opened the door. There you go. Okay. Then I'll take back. Pretend like I was Rabs protecting my. I'll take the very back. Pretend like I was protecting my ears from uh, the loud volume from Canada, right? And didn't catch the uh, the marching order. So who's in front? Mordax. Then champ. Then champ. And in this corner, what? And who's in the rear? I, all I'm saying is I'm a sneaky gobbo, so and you can't really see me. So, so put it, stay in the rear? <laughs> That's actually a trait I have in the rear. <laughs> put Torvo in the back. I didn't choose it. It chose me. And Rob just wanted to take the key after, out of the door. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you want to lug out? around? You want to lug around bones? He and does. This weird yes. crown? He wants the arm bone back. Whatever. You did. Uh, you did say that um, you took the crown, right? Yes. Just, just checking, asking for a friend. I got a wooden crown. Yay. <laughs> Ow! Ooh, but I'm, I'm royalty. royalty. So, I mean, if that's what you want, I would have stopped, and then as you're reaching for all that crap, I just would have walked past you. <laughs> and like, eh, rav. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, uh, uh, Maverick, Mordex, go ahead and roll perception check as you, uh, proceed down the stairs. 22. 22. So you get to the hairpin turn at the bottom, and you walk out into, uh, this ginormous, can I say ginormous? Is that okay? Sure. That won't take offense. It's your turn. Uh, a large, a large hollow area. Um, and uh, go ahead and uh, look at that uh, that photographo. What does it mean to be hollow? It means to be Jake. Ah. Hey. Oh wait, so, I made. <laughs> all right. It's all right. You can be offended with me. You guys have it all pulled up. As you look around at the dusty chamber, a few things catch your eye. <laughs> is that etched in the wall? <laughs> the right. largest and most notable is the sheer drop-off of the chamber you're standing in. The ground that you can see goes roughly 20 feet from the wall, which the door you entered in through is on by approximately 50 feet. And if, if you'll notice, uh, the top left-hand corner of that, uh, of that sketch... It says NTS, which means not to scale. So, oh, be aware of that. Oh, this is artist rendition. Gotcha. <laughs> Continue. This room looks to have been someone's personal chambers at one time in the far distant past. Working around the area from your right, you see a crudely made chest of drawers, a neatly and a neatly made bed. A bookshelf with some small knickknacks on it resides on the adjacent wall. 
To the left of the bookshelf, you see another half passage. Uh, where the wall should continue, it cuts off, similar to the edge of the chamber in front of you. Where, uh, where the wall continues on the left this time, you see a small workbench with some tools on it and a barrel next to it on the ground. Now, you'll note that it says uh, reserved for workbench. That's because I got to this point last night. I was like, I, I don't have it in me to draw a workbench. It's going to look like garbage. I mean, look at look at the bookshelf. It looks like it's, it's tilting. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> Somehow it was off the, off, off the plane. It just... <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, it, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Check back adjust. later. <laughs> <laughs> um... Uh, immediately to your left, you see a work in progress of something being carved into the wall. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Is it lit? Is this lit? Uh, no. Not like how uh, the, the sconces were in the other okay. chambers. But you all still have your uh, lanterns, except for uh, Mordax. I don't think Mordax has a lantern. No, but I can still light my torch. Or use your dark vision. Mm-hmm. But for those mean? who are behind me, um, I just kind of walk in and look around and say, "I mean, I'm I'm looking for immediate danger. Do I see any?" Uh, you don't see anything of immediate danger. Okay. Uh, Nor do you hear everything. anything uh, of immediate uh, danger. It looks like it looks like some old room. With a giant as, cliff, as, cliff, as, as, as you say that, your voice echoes back to you. It says something different, though. <laughs> <laughs> you're an idiot. You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not what it is, you ignorant wretch. <laughs> okay. Oh, I, I'll also mention that it's kind of dark. <laughs> cool. Champ's going to well, walk all, in. Yeah, let's all stumble in, you yeah? know? Did we get that door closed above us? As you think that thought process, you hear, um, you, uh, let's see, Torvo's in the back, right? Well, I think Rav took some time to pull that crap out the door. Okay. Um, as you, uh, as you're about to close the door, Rav uh, gets behind... stuck out there. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Rav. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you guys. There's You'll so many spiders that. <laughs> Rav will remember this. Um, so as as Rav steps over the threshold to the door, the uh, uh, braziers go out, and you hear the skittering of spiders coming at the door. You close it, and it clicks behind you. Do you close it? Do you close it, Rav? That's why I took the keys to close it. Because mm-hmm. spiders Just know so- how to use keys. Apparently the GM wanted to tell us what we were doing. <laughs> he did. That, he did a little bit of that last episode. I know, right? Oh, it's and like then, he has a narrative he wants to happen, and he's not looking for the chaos crazy that we want to happen. <laughs> so Mordex, uh, on that level, you walk forward fifty-two feet and step off the cliff. <laughs> You're, you were compelled. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what got into me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Tell my story. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Champ's going to walk into the room and uh, look around and noticing that thing on the wall, I'm going to go investigate it. The uh, the carving? The drawer ring. The drawer ring? The cart? Oh, while he's doing that, I would have moved into the room and gone over to the knickknacks on the bookshelf. Ooh, Nick Neck Paddywhack. <laughs> That's a 28 on perception for the drawer ring. Draw, uh, all right. Well, upon closer inspection of the drawing, you see that it's not a drawing at all, except, but rather a, a carving. Embarrassing. Uh, very subtle. Good to know. Uh, <laughs> the carving seems to be someone's attempt at carving a half dragon, half human form split vertically down the middle. You see a horn, one wing, a tail, and a clawed foot on the left, and a head, arm, and leg taking shape on the right. At one point, there were several candles that adorned the area surrounding the carving. 
candles. Interesting. What's the temperature like in here? Uh, it's brisk. It's brisk. It's moist. Can we feel a breeze? It is. It is the exact. It is the exact temperature that I would like uh, to sleep in. So cold. Mm. Nice. Uh, and uh, you don't. You don't feel uh, any sort of breeze. Mm. But the, but the air isn't stale. <laughs> Rav, Rav wants to walk over and uh, take a look at that workbench. Yeah, okay. I was, I was going to check out the chest of drawers. All right, um, let's go. Uh, let's go over to um, Mordex because you said you went over to the uh, bookshelf. Yep. Did you roll perception? Not yet. Go ahead, roll perception. Thirteen. On the bookshelf, you see. Go ahead and roll a d4. Ooh, what did you pick up? Three. You see three potion bottles. What color are they? <laughs> are wait? Uh, are they just empty bottles? No, they are. They are filled with uh, potions. Throw it against the wall. Varying colors. <laughs> Throw it against the wall. Okay. Test it. Take a swig. <laughs> Do it. You hear as you uncork. What color are they? I mean, you what color are you they? want to be a quester, right? Just drink it. <laughs> it's a rite of passage for D5 questing. <laughs> what color are they? The oh, spirit shit. of Durfee compels you. <laughs> <laughs> Questers ride or die. <laughs> Questers Bottoms up, everybody. Um, you know what? Yeah, you see four. One for everybody. You like I playing want, Russian roulette? <laughs> if I want to share. I see three. Come on. What color three, are they? One red, one yellow, one blue. Primary, huh? I wonder what happens if I mix them together. <laughs> Blello. I wonder. <laughs> Is she a rainbow? <laughs> Blello. Um, okay. Well, I'll just kind of pick them up and like put them on a... I don't know if I have anything to carry them. I mean, I have my my sack, or my my whatever they're called, pack, satchel, pack. my adventure pack. <laughs> well, they just might clink around a little heavily. <laughs> okay, um, sounds good. And then, uh, who went over to the workbench? That was Rav. Rav. Uh, so you head to the workbench. The workbench has an array of tools that would be used in the traditional carving of stone. What's different about these tools, though, is the shimmering substance that's on some of them. Cool. Scratch that. I'm putting all the potions in my belt pouch. Ooh. Duly noted. Is there a lot of tools with uh, shimmering substance on them? Um, not, not especially. Um, oh, I'll gather them all up and take them. <laughs> okay. How many do you got at this point? Like, what's your bull cap, man? Like, <laughs> you got to be like your pants are falling down or something. Come on. <laughs> I don't want to say. <laughs> uh, it's like playing a card game and somebody just counted out your card hand. Like, how many cards you have in your hand? <laughs> so? <laughs> All right. So how do, you put, how do you put the tools in your pack? I'd uh, pick them all up so they're all together. Just those ones and lay them in. Uh, do you pack. pick, do you put them in your pack, handle up or handle down? <laughs> Does it matter? Handle up so I can grab it safely. Okay. As you, uh, as you put the first couple tools in your bag, uh, they, uh, they, they pierce through the bottom of your bag, creating a, uh, a hole that hopefully you catch it in time before it becomes a big problem. Ooh. Yeah. Well, I got nothing to do with them then. Go ahead and roll a D100. That's not a bad idea. D100 for what? To see if you... Uh, He'll tell to you. See, <laughs> to see how, how big the hole is in your bag. Ooh. It's a dangerous game. Zero. That's a hundred. <laughs> yeah. That's a hundred. So whatever, that's a hundred then. Yeah, you can't get zero. <laughs> Like zero zero zero? Yeah, as in zero zero, yeah. Wow. 
There's a one percent chance of that happening, by the way. So of every number on that stupid dice. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. So you uh, you very rapidly uh, take it out, and it's just a small hole. But you are surprised at how uh, how effortless how effortlessly that created the hole in your in the bottom of your bag. Go ahead and make another perception check. Four. <laughs> oh no, that's gonna be four plus eight, so uh, twelve or yeah, twelve. All right, <laughs> everything else seems normal, hmm. and uh, we are having uh, uh, somebody else at the chest o drawers. Yeah. All right. Or perception. Perception it up. All right, eighteen. And you just kind of open all the drawers and. Yeah, or, and I've also like. Feeling up under each one. Okay. I, I even want to pull the drawers out if it's possible. Looking for like a dime bag or something. Just want to make sure. I'm really against drugs. You know this. <laughs> you know my whole backstory. Um. So <laughs> as you as you put your you you pull out the first drawer and you kind of like put your hand up on the on the back side. Mm-hmm. And you feel a spider web and a spider starts to crawl down your finger. Okay. I pull They're it coming. Out and look at it. <laughs> is it uh, a normal spider? Yeah, it's just a regular spider. And I just flick it and I keep at what I'm doing. Which way do you flick it? Towards <laughs> towards Mordax over the bed. It uh, it just lands next to him and skitters off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Mordax skitters off the shelf. <laughs> Tell my story. Die. <laughs> Die. In the chest of drawers. In the chest of drawers you find some elegant clothes and a plain gold crown wrapped carefully in a velvet cloth. Okay. I pull it out and I hold it up and I go. Hey guys, hey guys, uh, look, what guys look what I found. What I found, what I found, what I found. As you're holding it up, then you look on the inside, there's like an inscription and it says property of Isidigo King. <laughs> Hey, I think this is the weirdo of Issa Ego. It says so right here. Uh, it says so. Uh, or, uh, look, um, I'm, I'm going to hold this up for everybody, and I'm going to read this inscription that's right here. And it's... <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm just gonna I'm just going to dry out everything you say by, like, 12. <laughs> uh, and then... Uh, and then I let everybody know that there's some pretty clothes in here. I have no interest. So um, I'm gonna do a perception check in the for the room, and to, just to see like what the dust situation is like. Ooh. That's a twenty-eight. Um, so as you look at the dust, then you see where you can clearly see where everybody's been stepping, um, and like it'd be it'd be super easy to uh, recreate the crime scene if you guys committed a crime and then left. Okay. Uh, so there's a it's a it's a pretty thick layer of dust on on everything. Okay. I'm gonna look under the bed now. Okay. And like turn the mattress without being like a huge a hole. I hope, but you know whatever. This person ain't coming back. Yeah, you're you're pulling out desk your dress, dresser drawers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, twenty uh, twenty four. Okay. You're such a monk. <laughs> <laughs> the uh... what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> Looking for every spare coin he can. You know how monks are. Gotta get that dollar. <laughs> Especially them gabo monks. <laughs> um. So, uh, the the bed looks comfortable despite mm-hmm. having that thick layer of dust on it, mm-hmm. but nothing else of of particular interest. Nothing underneath or mattress or anything. No. Okay. It's memory foam. Cool. So. Cool. So you you put you put a glass you put a water skin down which yeah. is full of air, and you jump on the bed and no air comes out of the water skin. So wow, cool. that holds very well. Um, I'm gonna see if I can fit this in my pack. The mattress. How does it fold up? <laughs> Use a vacuum. Put it in one of those bags and roll it out. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, I've been waiting to use this. <laughs> this is a mattress. Out. I pull out a billows and like you know put it just flip a switch and puts it on reverse. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Now I really feel like letting this gag really fly, and I'm just dragging this mattress everywhere. <laughs> Ride it down the cliff. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> now you all regret that you don't have a mattress, don't you? <laughs> Tell my story. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you like you drag it over to the edge of the cliff and throw it off yeah. without anybody else seeing it, and then you guys, hey, check this out. You jump off, bounce back up. <laughs> Woo! Well, you guys no, thought I was gone. It happened. It really happened. And yeah. then everybody clapped. Because <laughs> my lights broke it. I saw this going differently. <laughs> Tell my story. <laughs> That's right. Anyway. Okay, okay um, sorry. Sorry, that was really <laughs> um, okay, I, Champ's gonna go over and check the barrel. Okay. Uh, as uh, as you go over to check the barrel, then you see that Rav is uh, investigating the hole in his bag. And then I'm gonna go over to Torbo, and I want to show him my potions that I found, and uh, <laughs> and ask him a question here. <laughs> Uh, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? I don't know. I don't know. I found them on the shelf over there. Should we uh, test them out? Yeah, test them out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> might as well take a little bit of a little bit of a What are you doing? Oh, occultism. Okay. At least. <laughs> At the very least, that's true. I should probably do on mine too. Uh, Seventeen. Okay. Nineteen. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any sort of occult uh, value or uh, no, ramifications. No magical semblance. Uh, you, you can identify know? stuff with occult. Did nature, arcana, nature arcana, and occult all fall under. Oh. But if you're going to say that it's strictly arcana, so that it comes from arcana, fine, whatever. But yeah, yeah. I mean, there's you sense of a magical type essence. Sure. That that there's magic. It's not. We it's know not that, just a, We know that they're potions. It's not like curdled milk. <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> you know. All right. Smells like uh, vinegar. Pee water. Yeah. yeah. It's, pee, so it's just pee jars. <laughs> can I make a check, a check of uh, how they do smell? Uh yeah. Fourteen. Uh, go ahead and do a medicine check as well. Okay. Oh. Oh. Ooh. Uh, four. Have you know I got a five? <laughs> I got a nine. <laughs> oh man! It's safe. Yeah. Well, uh, they. Uh, yeah, their potions are right. I whip out my ladle. Interesting. <laughs> it looks like it looks like a duck. <laughs> Sounds like a duck. <laughs> Why is it a dog? <laughs> <laughs> All right. While this is going on, let's let's uh, let's go back over to where. Uh, Champ and Rav are so. Uh, <laughs> Rav, you're looking at your bag. Champ, you come up. Uh, do you say anything to Rav about his bag, or do you just go and look at the barrel? No, nah, I just go look at the barrel. Okay. I, I don't want to force you. You know, I just, uh, just I just look over. Huh? Again, while you're looking at the barrel, you see that there's a hole in Rav's <laughs> bag. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, so you uh, you look at the barrel, and uh, it's. Uh, um, a smaller barrel than like a typical barrel. It'd be like a like a five gallon bucket <laughs> in today's standards. That okay. bears a half barrel, um, <laughs> and uh, the the tops on it. Um, but you can tell just by uh, like moving it around a little bit. It's not completely full. There's there's a liquid inside there, but uh, without opening the top, you don't know what it is. So well, I'm gonna open the top. Okay, pop that top. Okay. Uh, you open the top and you peer inside and see a like silvery type shiny liquid inside. I'm gonna pull out my uh, feel good dagger, dip it in there. Interesting choice. It's a very interesting <laughs> choice. All right. Goodbye. Feel good ladder. <laughs> Still feel good. It uh, it coats the the dagger's blade in that same silvery liquid. All right, now I'm going to go back over to the carving. Okay. And I'm going to touch the carving with the dagger. And and write uh, write that uh, champ was here <laughs> for a good time. For a good time. Call more dice. <laughs> Call more dice. <laughs> <laughs> Use your nearest planar sphere. <laughs> Going upstairs. Um, you okay, never know so how far you can... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you spread your wings and fly? That's amazing. Um, do you? Uh, so you just touch it to it? Well, I'm gonna place it where the heart would be on the drawing, mm. and just push. It 
easily goes through the stone. Nice. But now we don't know if it's because of the dagger or because of the substance that you used. All right. Well, I pull the dagger out. <laughs> does it make any? Does it make any sound or anything like that? Uh, no, not like. I mean, it makes the sound of a, a hot knife through butter. Okay. A little bit of a sizzle. So me and me and Mordax over there acting like chuckleheads don't even know this is going down. Then correct. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I pull out the dagger. <laughs> okay. Uh, when you uh, pull out the dagger, then the uh, you see that the coating of liquid that was on it is not there anymore. Okay, so then I touch the dagger to a different part of the picture. Dagger screams. Just kidding. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are you the, doing? <laughs> the dagger uh, touches solid stone and nothing happens. Awesome. Hey guys, hey guys, this barrel's hey guys, full, this of barrel's stuff. full of stuff. Full That's a uh, pretty, uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool. I could stab him through stone with it. What kind of stuff? Kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. it's all silver. Oh, yeah. silver. Uh, like, 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 is it is it solid or is it or is it? It's a liquid. It's a liquid. I wonder. It's gaseous stage. It seems to be in plasma. You go over and you hear it quickly going into the air all around you. Do I recognize this material? It's the same stuff that you saw from earlier. Hey guys, that, hey I think it's the same stuff that I put my bolt in. Uh, uh, you dipped a bolt? You dipped a bolt? Yeah, check it out. And I pull it out. I was like, I was like yeah, it was right outside the door as we left Calendrill to die. Rob's going to pull out his alchemical tools and fill a couple of vials with that uh, same liquid. Okay. Uh, how many empty vials do you have? Um, just a second. I don't know what it says in here. Yeah, be, be looking. It just that. says a uh, mobile collection of vials and chemicals that can be used for alchemical tasks. Okay. Pretend you have so, what? So I'll say two or three. I was thinking, I was thinking two, so we'll call it, we'll, we'll split the difference and call it one. Two it is. Two's good. Two's good. Um, you're like no, it says there's 80 vials in here. Well, if my uh, if my quiver holds these fine, my bandolier that is, I'm gonna I'm gonna coat the rest of my heads. Okay. Cool. Um, you do so. Sweet. And uh, do you remember how he said uh, write that down? So yeah. all of them are coated no, now. No. Okay. Um, and it should be noted that. Uh, um, the barrel isn't full, um, as as uh, was claimed by Champion, so it's not completely full. Uh, it's it's probably only a fifth of the full way full, twenty percent. Oh, how much did we waste? <laughs> Wait, uh, which means this barrel weighs about how much? I don't know what the unit weight of this stuff is. Eighty pounds. It's like it's like two hundred pounds. Can we lift it? Can Rav like, pick it up and put it in his backpack? <laughs> it's definitely uh, uh, just just kidding, just kidding. It's like totally a heavy metal. <laughs> it's mercury. All, yeah, it's a mercury. This, he said this was a five gallon barrel, or is a half a five gallon barrel, whichever. So this is what a a gallon. I'm pretty sure I did give the unit measure. Yeah, so it's that there's measure. a half a barrel. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that you you are correct. It'd be about a gallon of liquid that's left. Okay. So did we have enough? Good math, Reed. Did we have enough to do what we did, or did we kind of? Uh, yeah, that what doing what you did took up a, su- a surprising amount of it. It, like, latches on. Yeah, yeah. And and it puts, like, a thick coating. Interesting. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reach in lightly and touch it. Not like, oh. not, like, dip my hand in there, but, like, you know, kind of dip the tip of my finger. What finger? <laughs> My pinky. There goes your fingerprint. Um, I was not expecting somebody to touch it. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, go ahead and make a reflex saving throw. All right. <laughs> Twenty-five. Okay. Um, so. You weren't. Let me let me let me rephrase this. Can I can I go into your mind for a minute? 
Okay. I just don't want to get yelled at for telling you what you think. <laughs> you weren't expecting um, a liquid to drag you down or like latch onto you and want to pull when you resist, like when you pulled your finger back. But that's exactly what this did. It wasn't a lot, um, but uh, it kind of stuck to your pinky in a way that when you you started feeling a pain in your pinky and you pulled it back, but it almost like stuck to the liquid, um, kind of like it's viscous, um, and it kept eating away at the tip of your pinky. And so your, uh, your pinky got eaten away all the way down to the second knuckle. Is it, is it non-Newtonian? Whoa. Really? Translate that for our listeners. Non-Newtonian like Ublek where it, it holds into a solid state with, with, uh, with like striking. So like, like a, oh. a quick force would force it to turn into a, a hard um, no, substance. it would, it would be, uh, uh, well, I mean, you can do that with like any fluid really. Like you do that with water. Is the surface tension? Is that what you're kind of talking no, about? No, non-Newtonian makes it turn into almost a solid state. Okay. Uh, basically they think of the viscosity of like honey. Okay. 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 That's what I was trying to figure out. Like when you said it started to become viscous in the way that, okay, gotcha. Um, but yeah, so that eats all the way back Gosh, to dang. your second knuckle before it stops. Cool. Well, I'm going to treat my wound. <laughs> is it Did like it cauterized or is it you got regeneration do you remember that picture that I sent you guys of that pizza oh <laughs> <laughs> is it look is it like flayed it, it kind of it kind of looks like that wow. so is there parts of the the bone still and stuff not not up here on the not on the actual pinky and so uh, so we could see as if we were to cut that off and what would be just sitting there? Yeah, and then like dip that in acid to like make it so it's not like a crisp, like firm, like is it cut, cut line? Yeah, it's it, not cauterized though. So it's kind of garbled. Okay. Yeah, so then, I'm, then I'm treating my it's wound. Goofy. It's not. It's, not it's like if you took it off on a belt sander. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Yeah. I'm, I'm treating a my wound, faster. obviously. For those of you who don't know what that looks like, I mean, I don't use your imagination. <laughs> For those of you who don't know what it looks like, just look at Champion's pinky. Yep. <laughs> okay, I got a I got a twenty three for treating my wound. Okay, uh, you successfully bandage it up, but oh, it hurts. Oh yeah. I, uh, I don't think we should touch it. Is that? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and now we know. Ca- Captain Obvious over here. <laughs> Is that your shield hand or your sword hand? It's on my shield hand. Hmm. I bet. <laughs> No, oh. I, I did it with my left hand. I wanted to make sure that I was using a non-dominant thing. Then it's all the way down to your first knuckle. Yeah. It takes off half the hand. Entire pinky's gone. <laughs> um, all right. No, you're good. You're good. I just wanted to uh, make sure that you remember that. Yeah. Cool. All right. So. Uh, Don't touch it. It hurts. Don't touch, touch it. it. Does, <laughs> does champion cry? No, he's were a man. You, were you were you holding back the tears? No, look at him. He's crying right now. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Stop, Stop it! it. Okay. I never well, want to see you again. I'm really sorry for that, but maybe we should find a way out of here then. <laughs> I'm gonna so. I'm gonna coat both my daggers <laughs> with what's left. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm gonna go check out this whole area then. Okay. Uh, the passage way yeah, over by the bookshelf. Um, I will say that you there's enough liquid in the barrel after everybody's you know had their fun um, for probably one more application of something to something. So oh. as, far, as far as usages are concerned, there's one more usage left that you can get out of the barrel. Does that make sense? <laughs> Let's pour it on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens. Uh, okay. I don't know. I got some spiked knuckles. <laughs> Toss them in there. Right. Although, the contact the skin doesn't seem but so wait, awesome. wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so besides the pain that's going on inside my hand, obviously, do I feel that same negative feeling that we got from the other things? Good question, but no. If anything, you feel the opposite of that. Despite the pain, it's you, you, you. You feel happy. <laughs> feel a positive energy. 
This feels you right. Mean, yeah, you... I was supposed to be missing this part of my pinky. Oh, dude. Okay. <laughs> it feels. It feels like. Uh, um. It feels like what regular magic would feel like. Gotcha. If that okay. makes sense. Yeah. Not a negative. Not like evil vibe or just it's correct. Just... Correct. Gotcha. Okay. Correct. Good question. Cool. Um. So you go over. Torvo goes over to the. Uh. uh the uh, the passage, right? Yeah. The half passage looks like it too was affected by the collapse. Mm, yeah. Don't you don't forget I just said that. Oh. Take two. Hold on. The oh, collapse. collapse. Oh. Beep. We're getting some DM work. Yeah, beep. <laughs> riggedy riggedy rewind. <laughs> beep. All right. So, <clears throat> as you go up to inspect the half passage. You can't help but look at the cliff along the way. Uh The cliff looks as though at some point the chamber you are in extended further, um, uh, but perhaps a large, a a different large chamber underneath this chamber collapsed at some point, creating this vast emptiness in the chamber. Okay. Do you look over the edge? Yeah. The cliff's about 70 feet tall. Okay. And there are large boulders and scree covering the floor at the bottom. Go ahead and roll perception check. 24. Um, as you peer over the edge, something vaguely humanoid catches your eye. Only momentarily, though. This shape is in a far corner of the chamber, but moving your head just right, you can vaguely see the shape of a humanoid. Mm-hmm. Cool. Hey, uh, guys. Hey, uh, guys. I, think I, I, think I think I saw something down there. Something down there. Something like, a down there. like a person or something. Person or something. Person or something. Person. <laughs> Champ looks over. Is it dead? Is it dead? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it was really hard to tell, and I can't really make it at the out now. But it's really far down. So, I mean, unless it looks like there's really way, unless you want to scale the cliff with some rope and stuff. Let's see what else is. I want to see what else is over here. Uh, the half passage looks like it too was affected by the collapse below and only and has only a narrow path to tread. Okay. The path leads about 30 feet and tends right out of this out of sight. Careful calculated steps will be needed when going this way. Mm-hmm. So is the is the size of it I can stand up straight? Yeah, yeah, the uh, and that's why I drew the not to scale on there. Yeah, um, the height of that half passage uh, is tall enough for a uh, normal sized um, being to stand up in, um, but it's half as wide um, or uh, about a quarter or as wide as a regular passage would be. So you need some balance. Yeah. Um. Cool. Hey, uh, this looks hey, pretty uh, precarious. Do we want to serious? set anything, anything up anything if we're going to go look, look past, look past, past, this, past or this? You guys just want to try and walk it. I think it'd be okay to walk it. It might be good to rest after that battle with the spiders. And I just lost part of my pinky. Oh my gosh. All right, all right, all right. Was it, didn't, didn't Rav take like 14 damage? No. Yeah. I actually took like <laughs> I actually took a pretty good hit too. <laughs> I didn't oh no, your shield that. that's right. You got hit your shield got hit and that's what it was. Yarp. I took like I took like thirteen points of damage. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, Alright, well we that, can take time to thought. heal up and uh, fix our gear. We'll just call I it mean, a long rest and then move on, right? Yeah. Is is there anywhere that I could anchor a rope? Um you anchor to the bed. What's oh, the bed made out of? Wood. <laughs> <laughs> Memory foam. <laughs> Memory foam. But I mean, how much do you weigh? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't do it, but you could. Riding I'm that pretty... mattress down the cliff doesn't sound so bad right now, huh? I'd like to think I'm pretty stacked. I mean, I'm like 180 pounds, you know, all muscle. It's so lean, so cut. <laughs> 180 at three foot, pounds at, at three foot. <laughs> I don't sense. think that's stacked anymore. You have no neck, neck. <laughs> but he can hold his breath. Um, you better believe I could outflex anybody with my neck muscles. You this look is... like a blob of a goblin. <laughs> no, no, I don't. Even, I don't know how much. This is right. Torvo now. <laughs> yeah, I think we can just 
turn the rope around something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you just walked 10 feet. Okay, I gotta take a break. Just a <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> okay. I mean, look, if we're gonna be here for a minute, what would you think about. Uh... You know what? In the midst of saying that, I just take my lantern and I fling it down where I think I saw the thing. Oh. <laughs> You just chuck it? Yep. Okay. Uh, go ahead. In, in the midst of what I was saying, too. Like, maybe what? we can... Uh, uh, yeah! Uh, <laughs> <yeet>. <laughs> All right. Uh, I want you to make a check of some kind to, to see how accurate you throw that, but what would, what would that be? Uh, I don't know. You got It'd be an ath- improvised thrown weapon, basically. Athletics, be, I mean. Unless, yeah, unless I'm going to attack I think. with it. That's fine. Okay. You want me to do it as though I'm attacking with an improvised thrown weapon? I mean, because when you're attacked with an improvised thrown weapon, then basically... I have no proficiency in it, so yeah. I mean, basically, that's so what you're doing, like is you're fling. throwing it, trying it to hit okay. somewhere specific. So I mean, what if I have... What if I'm uh, practiced in shot put? <laughs> Lord then shot if you had a shot put here, then that'd be great. <laughs> no. All right, all right, here we go. I am yeeting the lantern. <laughs> the lantern. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all right, 20. Nice. All right, so, uh... uh you throw it. What's your range on uh, throwing the weapon? On a throwing weapon? Yeah. I have... Javelins can go 30 feet. I mean, but it's it's down. You know? Yeah, you are you are right. You are right. It's down. So Shut daggers... Up, it, here's, here's for instance, like, a javelin goes 30 feet, a dagger goes 10. Okay. Uh, so it a makes it about... throwing dagger goes 20. So uh, it makes it about uh, two-thirds of the distance to where you saw it. Okay, because because I had I had it pegged at about seventy feet out, seventy okay. feet down, seventy to one hundred feet out. Okay, so so I hit about seventy feet off. Uh, yeah, like sixty feet ish. Okay, because I mean you just gave it all you had. Yeah, and and we'll say that takes into account the uh, the angle as well. Sure. So does it explode? Does it give off extra light down there? Um, it can, when it hits, then uh, whatever type of fuel was inside of it kind of like burst a little bit and like so it's like a uh, um, like a flash mm. and then and then it just kind of goes out yeah okay. so um, it's it's not enough that it gives you enough light to see what else was down there other than what we've described already and I couldn't see it with dark vision correct okay so you I, figured that the, was how far down gang, as I as I just flung it I, I looked and I went Hmm. <laughs> well, that didn't work out the way I thought. It's a scientific method. Uh, you what, said what that was hundred and some feet. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's pro- it's probably about a hundred feet from the base of the cliff to where uh, uh, more uh, Torvo saw. Can that you kind of, humanoid figure. can you guess how? Uh, can you Tor- kind of Tor- see how far the uh, how far down the cliff goes? Because we could do some dancing lights. It's about seventy feet down. Yep, you can stick those 120 feet out. So I'm yeah. guessing that's what you were thinking. Yeah, that's, uh, John. that's what I asked. So that's why. So as as you approach me, I, 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 with do you have lights on right now? No, I have my lantern. So I was, that's what I was just going to ask you, like Torvo, do you, do you see something down there? What, what's going there? on? Why'd you tuck that lantern? <laughs> oh yeah! Hey, oh, yeah. Rap. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh! Oh, my gosh. What the heck? <laughs> Right there. Right there. Did you see where it hit? You see the light down there. I'm telling you, I think there's something down there. All right, just give me a sec here. Rav's going to set down his lantern and then uh, do his cantrip of dancing lights and send them on down. <laughs> I love I love how Tor was like, oh, hey, 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 friend, buddy. <laughs> oh, I completely forgot. Now oh that I can God. use you for something. <laughs> Sorry, get over here. After I've yeeted my lantern, and just <laughs> come stand right on the edge of this cliff here for a minute. Let me hold you. <laughs> do, you do you need to lean over the edge? Trust here, me. hold on to this mattress. <laughs> <laughs> kind of right. a theory I want to test. All right, so you cast dancing lights. Yep, I'm gonna. How, how many? How many dancing lights do you get? There's four, but they got to stay within ten feet of each other. Ten each feet other. of each other. Yeah. Um, and within 120 feet of you. That is correct. And they cast 120 feet of light. Wow. No, but you can at least see... Oh, they go out 120 feet? I think they do, don't they? Just a second. That's what you said in another episode. 
Did you want this to be a little further down? <laughs> it's it's actually light. a half a mile down. Oh, shoot. Did I say 100? I, I really meant to say uh, 400. <laughs> yeah, each light must remain within 120 feet of me and within 10 feet of each other. The lights, okay. uh, you can move any number of lights up to 60 feet. Okay. Okay. But it doesn't say how much light it gives off? I mean, it's fine if it doesn't. That's fine. We'll say no, it like we'll I, say I, it So, yeah, I can move them up to 120 feet out and as long as they're within oh, yeah. 10 feet of each other. We should still be able to see whatever they're by. Okay. So, yeah, you send it down to the area, and uh, who's all looking out that way it, now? It sheds light like a torch. There you go. Okay, cool. So I know that... I'm uh, looking there. Yeah, I know that uh, Torvo and now Champ, or now Rav are over there looking. Uh, Champ, are you still... Uh, uh, Looking after your little pinky? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm looking with everyone else now. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you guys, you, you look over, and sure enough, you, you do all indeed see this humanoid-type figure. Is it moving? We do, it's do we? It's not moving. It's not moving? It's not moving. What color is it? <laughs> uh, it's, it's, hard, it's hard to... You almost just see the shape. Okay. The outline of it. Okay. That's uh, 23 on perception. Do I notice any details? Uh, humanoid. Excellent. <laughs> All right. Hey, what would you guys think about going down there? Uh, I don't want to, don't but want uh, to, uh, want to, yeah, what, do you, what do you see what down, do you there? down there? Because I'm not I'm with not, the group. Not, the group. <laughs> Where are you at right now? I've, I've never been asked. I'm still over there looking at my potions, trying to figure out what they what they are. You're still laughing to yourself. I, I pulled out my ladle. I got distracted. And right, and then like, he like walked on, away. <laughs> Nothing. I got else. distracted That's... by the barrel, and then I get distracted by the edge of the cliff. <laughs> Man, that's bad. <laughs> ladle, ladle's still in hand. Uh-huh. <laughs> So, Wait, I threw the ladle and not the torch. Yeah, so, Stupid. anyway, I asked... I'm going down there for the ladle! I asked my question, anyway, so... Yeah. I guess you guys yeah, tell me what to see. There's something down there. Uh, something something good? Something bad? Tor- Torvo spotted something. Looks like a statue or something down there. Is there another way down besides climbing? I don't know. I feel pretty good about going down this. Rav, Rav's going to pull his lights back and kind of shine them around the base of the cliff to see if there's, you know, like rubble high enough that we can scale down or anything like that. Or rubble? we can just you take the to, path. What, scale down rubble? Well, I mean, there well, is that better path. than uh, there is that down path. on a mattress. Why don't we path? take the path? What about the path? What Where path? does that go? The small the path. half passage. Well, oh, didn't it passage, look like though. it was... It looked like it was staying on the same plane as... Correct. There, Yeah, no elevation change that you could see. So, like, look, I well, got send a climbing the, kit. Send the lights down there. I got a climbing kit. I got pittens. I got freaking crampons, you know? <laughs> so, not great for rock, but... Have and on barefoot. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, like, I can scale it. With the added, you know, like I'm not worried about falling if we can anchor it appropriately. It's just a matter of how long will it take. (laughs) That's not that's not untrue. And then we do a we do a bro uh, shake and like (laughs) shoulder hit. Gobos, (laughs) go goblins! Uh, (laughs) I'll be your anchor. No, (laughs) all right, look. If if this that guys if if that's something we want to do then fine but I mean if we want to go check this out let's do it now while some of you rest I don't care I'll go down there I'm I'm not particularly keen on wanting to go down there okay because I mean not everybody needs to go down True. I'm already pulling crap out of my bag like, I'm just gonna <laughs> watch him as he descends and keep my lights around him okay well Bye. I pull out most of I pull out most of my climbing gear then, and I'm like, "Hey, does somebody hey, want to give me a little bit of extra rope?" I'll grab. I'll pull out his uh, fifty foot length of rope. Okay, That's enough for so <laughs> I'll head. I guess I'll head <laughs> down with you. I wanted. I wanted to find out what these potions did, but that's okay. Uh-huh. Does anybody want to help me with this knot? <laughs> I'll help you with the knot. One of them secret gabo knots. 
Why don't we use some of those stone tools back there to make a hole in the side of the rock so you don't even have to worry about it. Just tie it off the rock. Just anchor it. There's your anchor. Well, I have anchors too, so that's the thing. Like, so it's not even a huge deal. Oh, somebody said that they weren't for stones, so I was going something safer. I got you. No, we can do it. I mean, more the merrier. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm all. I'm all for it. That's that sounds fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you said you're gonna help him tie the two ropes together. Yeah. Oh, cool. What'd you get? Oh, uh, what am I rolling with again? Is this survival? Survival. Yeah. Nineteen. Oh, good. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so yeah, uh, um, how how it ends up being is Torvo is so excited to go down <laughs> that he like ties half the knot and just how everything has been for him in this chamber. He gets distracted by it, by something else, like going down, that it is only like half of a square knot. He just ties one overhand knot. And he's like, all right, let's go. And so you go over and you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. I know you're excited to get down there and you you tie it correctly. I didn't roll so hot. <laughs> That's why I say somebody want to help me with this knot. Okay. I, was, I was planning on it. I, I'm going to come down with you. I'll, I mean, I'll come down okay. with you. Point. So what I'm planning on doing then is I'm going to take my, you know, the rest of the climbing tools and I'm going to put in an anchor every, you know, like 10 feet. Okay. So. Okay. Now, I, I'm no expert when it comes to pitons, but yeah. I believe uh, it's kind of a one-time use for pitons. It is. Yes. I don't see how I'd be able to extract them without destroying it or anything. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm imagining that pretty much half my kit is gone with this. So. Okay. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. What do you want us to use? What? Athletics. Athletics for climbing, yes, please. Okay. Who's going down first? Uh, it's Torvald. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. He's got all the gear, so. And he's the one that's most anxious to get down there. Okay, well. I'm just I got down. a 29. Okay. So. All right. Uh, and what did you get? 11. All right. So. With the plus eight circumstance bonus of the climbing kit, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I think we better throw that mattress down there now. <laughs> so, go ahead and make a reflex save. I might have to make a reflex save with you too. <laughs> Fifteen. Okay. All right. So uh, you're a little shaky climbing over the edge, and uh, you're. You're not used to climbing ropes so much, um, and so uh, you kind of jerk a little bit as you slide down, and you reach out your hand real quick, and you grab onto the rock um, t- enough to stabilize yourself that you can uh, successfully uh, uh, climb down the rope without falling. So initially you were like, <clears throat> but then you grabbed on and you stabilized, and you, you guys both make it down to the bottom just fine. Okay. So uh, you walk over to uh, where the dancing lights are. And yeah. uh, you come across uh, the uh, humanoid figure. Uh, uh, I'm pulling my axe out. Okay. Just, you know, ready, just in case something happens. Okay. Uh, do you guys do anything on approach? Yeah, it's stealthing up. I want to stealth up. I'm also going to be stealth. We give each other the look. Okay. Go ahead and both roll stealth. Yeah, 20. 19. Okay. Um, you guys continue on. So you're sneaking up, and then what? Uh, uh, I guess what's your intent? See what the heck's going on first. Yeah, okay. find out what this is. You know, see if it's actually a, a, alive or not. Maybe okay. something sleeping. So as you guys as you guys stealth your way up, um, then you uh, get closer and closer, and it it still is hard to make out what the shape really is. Like I said, you can tell it's a humanoid figure, but it's not until you're like, you know, 10 or five feet away from it that you're finally like, oh, okay, that's weird. And it's a uh, carved statue, but the stone on it has been polished down so that it's a mirror finish reflecting the cave and the surrounding areas um, off of it. So when you looked at it from up on the cliff, then you just saw like the shape, but like you couldn't really see details just because it was reflecting the cave and the uh, the boulders and scree around it. Weird. So, uh, but it's made from an obsidian. Oh. Oh. Obsidian. 
Okay. Do you have um, the crown? No, I don't have the crown. Oh! Yeah, I didn't take it. I just showed everybody and set it back in the dresser. <laughs> <laughs> You've got I the wood the crown, crown, too, up on the... Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Rav has that. Alright. Do you, could they hear us easily? Yeah, because well, e- remember, yeah, everything you're doing yeah. is echoing. So, like, I just shout back up. It's a mirror! It's a mirror! It's a mirror! It's a mirror! <laughs> cool! 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 <laughs> cool! <laughs> no! It no, has no it temperature! Has no it's temperature. fine! It's fine! It's fine! It's fine! <laughs> <laughs> Neat! <laughs> Okay. What, what do you guys? Do you guys need anything? Uh, do you have? I said, hey, Mordax, you want to tap, 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 tap mirror with some mirror with some mirror with some mirror with some mirror? Sure, I'll touch it with my uh, my axe yeah, real quick. Little tap, little tap. So you tap it, and it sounds like an axe hitting obsidian. Hmm. Cool. Just just a little just a little tap. How bulky is this? Yeah. And how tall is it? Yeah, it, it'd be it's like the statue of a human. Okay. okay, so I don't know what the unit weight of obsidian is, but it's probably not light. <laughs> no. <laughs> do you think that crown? This... Do you think that crown could go on top of it? Maybe, maybe, maybe. I guess. What do you want? You expect it to happen? Something cool. Okay. Is that what you guys want to do? And you're like some something cold. <laughs> uh nah i'm okay <laughs> i i move to where i can see my reflection in the mirror just a little bit okay anything happen no nothing happens okay it's like there... it's like one of those fun mirrors where it like makes your head really big and then like your body really small and then <laughs> reverses it is there is there anything else like around the area at all um no but as you kind of look around then you see that whenever this cavern collapsed um that this must have come from someplace else um, so someplace so, higher up yeah okay. yeah so so this this particular statue wasn't initially part of um the the chambers for uh that room right gotcha it had been scattered here yeah okay and well now, i mean i guess we're down here let's check everything else out might as well Okay. So it's as probably... you uh, as you walk around, I'll tell you what you see next time. <gasps> uh, I, no! just, okay. I just rolled a nineteen. Uh, you'll tell us now. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and go ahead and roll persuasion. Uh, persuasion check on the DM. <laughs> go ahead. Six. We'll see you next time. One two three. D five. Not your mama's D five. <laughs> D5. 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 D5.